everyone, welcome to this month's Handmade Beauty Box Live. I am so happy to have you with us today. Hi to Periscope viewers, hi to our Handmade Beauty Box subscribers, and hi to Snapchat viewers. So happy to have you. This month, what you got in your box was all the ingredients to make these adorable Christmas holiday lip balms. And I had these done up with this cute green color. Don't worry, it's not gonna tinge your lips green, but I did think it was really cute and wintry. So your handmade beauty box this month included five ounces of sweet almond oil, two ounces of yellow beeswax, two ounces of shea butter, 0.4 ounces of mint julep flavor and sweetener. And check this out. So I made sure to send it where it was already pre-mixed. So you got the mint julep flavor and the sweetener in one container. If you shake it up, it kind of goes a cloudy, a little cloudy kind of color. And that's because you're shaking in, you're actually shaking in air bubbles that are staying suspended throughout the, the product. And you're also moving some of the sweetener out of its suspension. Really interesting, huh? So before you go ahead and mix up your lip balm ingredients, just make sure to give this a little shake because the sweetener tends to go to the bottom and the flavor tends to go to the top. You also got 35 BPA-free lip butter pots in your Handmade Beauty box this month. And finally, you got an entire sheet of labels. I don't know about you guys, but in terms of the value for this box, this is pretty incredible because you get to make 35 lip butters. That's a lot. And if you're still looking for that perfect gift to put under the tree, we have 30 single boxes available right now. If you ordered on Handmade Beauty Box today, I would make sure they shipped out today so you had something either to make your own stocking stuffers or to put under the tree. What you're gonna need, it. oh, before I forget, you also got one dropper. Droppers are really useful in this project. What you're gonna need at home, you're gonna need a small heat safe container. I like to use the Pyrex brand for that, but any glass heat safe container will work. You'll need spoons, and you'll want a measuring spoon. So let's get started. One of the, and you can follow along with me with your easy to follow instructions on handmadebeautybox.com. Isn't that just the cutest little tree thing ever? I love that little graphic that we did, so cute. So follow along with me and we're gonna start making our lip balm base. So your Handmade Beauty Box this month came with everything pre-measured so you don't have to worry about measuring anything yourself. So we're gonna pour our five ounces of sweet almond oil into our heat safe container Sweet almond oil is a really nice, nourishing, conditioning oil. It's fantastic for lip products and all skincare products. Then we're gonna be putting in two ounces of our yellow beeswax. And this yellow beeswax, mm, I love the smell of beeswax. It smells amazing. I love this beeswax too, because it's in small pastilles, so it melts a lot easier than the, the beeswax that you, beeswax that you get that it's in large chunks so I love this and then two ounces of shea butter and when you got your shea butter in your handmade beauty box it came in this cute little kind of butter pat almost and the reason it was a butter pat is because we actually hand squished them all down that's right we did super fun now I'm going to take this to the microwave and I'm just going to melt it in 30 second bursts so heading over to my microwave I'm gonna melt this in 30 second bursts. And the reason I'm melting it in 30 second bursts is because I don't want that shea butter to get grainy and crystallized. So while, while it's melting, let's talk about those ingredients and why they're so important and so good for you. Sweet almond oil is a lightweight oil that is fantastic to use in all your skincare products because it has wonderful moisturizing and conditioning properties and it's also renowned for its rich concentration of oleic and linoleic essential fatty acids and what that means is that helps to prevent the cracking that you sometimes get with the dry skin in the winter i just heard that microwave ding so i'm just going to check on that and then we'll keep talking about the shea butter and the beeswax that's also in this recipe 
So let's look and see how we're doing. So I'm gonna pull this right out and show you how we're at after just 30 seconds. And you can see that we still have some, we still have a lot of melting to do. I'm just gonna give this a quick stir because I wanna make sure that the heat gets mixed around evenly. I don't know if you know this, but the microwave heats from the inside out, meaning there's a column of extra hot materials in that middle that need to get out to the side. So that's why I gave it a mix. So now I'm gonna put this back in the microwave for just 30 seconds. And if you're just joining me right now on Periscope, I am making lip balms from scratch from our handmade beauty box this month. The next ingredient that we have in your lip balms is shea butter. And shea butter is extracted from the pit of the fruit of the African shea tree or karite tree. It melts on contact with skin, making it an excellent addition to any sort of body balm or lip products. You may have heard of shea butter because it's very popular to use in lots of skincare ingredients because it is very emollient and it's pretty heavy. So it really gives a fantastic kind of rich feel on the skin. And it seems like we have a question over there from Periscope. Is that right, Haley? Yeah, they're wondering if microwaving the oils affects the oil at all. Does microwaving the oil affect the oils at all? Periscope, that is a great question. There's a little bit of controversy in the bath and beauty industry actually about whether microwaving the oils affects the, the consistency of the oils. When you're doing larger batches, you're always gonna want to end up using a stove or a double boiler because you just won't be able to fit enough oils in the microwave. But when you're doing smaller batches, the microwave is super convenient for melting smaller batches. And I haven't noticed any difference in consistency. The only problem that you can sometimes have is when you're working with shea butter. Shea butter is a butter that's comprised of a large amount of different types of fatty acids. And like any butter, when you melt it in the microwave, you know how if you melt butter in the microwave, it never really recongeals back up the way it started? It's the same with shea butter. So it's really important that we have a nice, slow, gentle melt for the shea butter. And so that's one of the reasons we're doing this 30 second melt, stir, melt, stir. So to answer your question, I haven't noticed any decrease in quality or consistency with my, with my oils or my recipe when using the microwave. And in fact, I find it to be super convenient to use the microwave. Thanks for that question. Feel free to ask more questions as I continue working through these ingredients and working through this project. So, oh, Courtney has a question from one of our Handmade Beauty Box subscribers. Hi. It's about nut allergies and what can you substitute for the sweet almond oil? Ooh, nut allergies. You guys, this is such a good question. So as you may have heard, there are a lot of people in the United States that are realizing they have nut allergies. A half a percent to 1% of the general population may have a nut allergy. And while it's uh, up in the air that if you use something that has nut oil in it, you may have an allergic reaction. When we're talking about our lips and something that gets so close to being something ingested, it's better to be safe than sorry. So if you know that you're gonna have someone with a nut allergy, instead of sweet almond oil, you're gonna wanna use another liquid oil that has a very similar feel. So something like olive oil, which is right from your pantry, that's a little heavier of an oil, but like fractionated coconut oil would be amazing. Jojoba, which is actually a liquid wax, meadow foam oil, or sunflower seed oil, because that's a seed, not a nut, or even apricot kernel oil you would still use the same usage rate. So in this recipe, if you were gonna use one of those, you'd still go ahead and use five ounces of whatever liquid oil you were using to avoid having to deal with any sort of nut allergies. So as you can see, we're starting to get melted here and it's great. And what you're noticing is that the beeswax is not melted yet. And that makes sense, right? Because the beeswax is an actual wax and it has the highest melting point. So I'm just gonna give this a good stir, make sure all of my heat is evenly distributed, and then I'm just gonna pop it back in the microwave for another 30 seconds. So for those of you that are following along at home, this will be going on two minutes, but it's important that you are doing 30 second bursts because we really want that melt to be extremely gentle as you're melting down all of your oils and your butters. Courtney, are there any other questions that have come in while we're doing this melting? Mm-hmm. Oh. So how can 
could you make this recipe harder or softer? Mm, so how could you make this recipe harder or softer? That's a great question. Say you're going to a really warm place and you need this to be hard so you can put it in your pocket. Say you're going to need it to be really soft because you're going skiing and you want to be able to just get that out on the slopes. If you want to make this recipe softer, you would just decrease the beeswax by about 10%. So you would use uh, most of what you got, but not all of it. Just use about 90%. And if you want to make it softer, wait. If you want to make it softer, you decrease the beeswax. If you want to make it harder, you decrease your liquid oil. So if you wanted to make this recipe softer, just use 10 to 20% less beeswax. And if you wanted to make this recipe harder, use 10 to 20% less of that sweet almond oil. That's a great question. So now we're just about ready to get started because you notice that we are fully melted now. And I'm gonna go ahead and just clear my space so I have Oh, thank you, Courtney is so smart. Okay, so this is one of my tips that I love to do. If you're not sure if your recipe is the right uh, consistency, if you freeze a spoon ahead of time, you notice how quickly that got hard? If you freeze a spoon ahead of time, you can check the consistency and just see, is this a consistency that I like? Is this too hard? Is this too soft? So if you're playing around at home and you're trying to figure out is this hard enough? Is this soft enough? Did I take too much beeswax out? Did I not put enough sweet almond oil in? If you're customizing, this is the way you test. So I'm gonna show you how quickly that happens again. Again, frozen spoon, just put it in your hot, melted your hot melted waxes and butters, and it hardens instantly so that you can test. It is such a fast and easy way to make sure that you have the great consistency that you want before pouring into all your lip butter tins. Thank you so much for grabbing this, Courtney. That's awesome. So now that we've tested and I've made sure that my consistency is exactly what I want, it's time to add our flavor oil and it's time to add our color. It's also time to make sure that you have everything prepped so that once it's ready to pour, you're ready to go. So I've actually uncapped all of my 35 lip butter pots and they are ready to go. And now I'm just gonna do 10 milliliters of our mixture. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Milliliters. Great. So we're going to do 10 milliliters, which is basically a full dropper and a half, more like three droppers actually, of this. So just 10 milliliters of the mixture. And mix this in really well. And you notice it gets a little tiny. I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but you notice it gets just a little teensy, teensy, teensy bit cloudy. It's totally normal. Just keep mixing. And while that's cooling and mixing and getting ready, I'm going to get ready to pour. So I'm just going to move. Mm, my goodness, you guys, this smells so good. This, I mean, like it smells like the most amazing peppermint candy. I'm gonna get ready to pour, but before I do, I wanna make sure I have full color in there. So, just one fourth teaspoon of the Shamrock Green Mica. And for those of you at home that are wondering, oh my goodness, why is this green? Is this gonna tint my lip screen? Not to worry, it's not enough to tint your lip screen. So it's just enough to give kind of a fun, playful color. You don't have to use it if you don't want it, but I love it. And just a note about using colors, if you get this kit and you're like, but I really just want a red, can't I just use red food coloring? No, you can't use food coloring. And the reason you can't use food coloring is because food coloring is usually in water and this is oil and waxes, and so food coloring wouldn't mix in very well. So if you don't want to use the green, you don't have to, or you could just add 1 8 of a teaspoon to half of this and have half green and have half white, and that would also completely work. So now I'm gonna get ready to go ahead and pour my containers. So I'm gonna put this off to the side. I'm gonna move my 35 pre-done lip balms out and with a very steady hand there's a reason i was drinking tea and not coffee i'm going to just pour gently and slowly into my containers so and what's really fun is you guys will be able to see these start to harden on camera and see the color change 
This colorant is a food grade lip safe colorant. It's really important that when you're making products that go on the lips that they are food grade or generally recognized as safe because every so often you can ingest just a teensy little bit of your lip balm product. So that's why you never want to be using crayons in lipsticks or lip balms and you never really want to be using any craft colorants in your lip balms. It's important to always craft with safety first in mind. Oh, it looks like we have a Periscope question. Ooh, Periscope question. Hi. Can you use the same mica colors that you use in cold process soap as you do in lip balm? That's a great question. So we have a Periscope viewer that makes soap, and I love to make soap, so welcome. Can you use the same mica colorants that you use in your cold process soap as you do in lip balm? Lip balm colorants have a slightly more stringent level of safety and, and standards for that, which makes sense, right? Because soap is a rinse off product, whereas lip balm is a leave on product, and it's a leave on product that's really near your lips, which then ends up going down into your stomach sometime. So you want to make sure with your vendor that the product that you're using is lip safe. Oftentimes, the colorants that you're using to color your cold process soap will indeed be lip safe but not always so make sure you just double check with your vendor so like for example if you're a soap maker and you're buying from brambleberry.com on brambleberry.com there's an entire section of lip safe ingredients there so that you can look and see if your lips if your lipstick colors are or if your mica colors are lip safe thanks for that question we have another question on from ustream hi ustream viewers thanks for watching can you use essential oils in lip balm? <gasps> Good question. Can you use essential oils in lip balm? You know, this is a really similar answer to the one I just gave. Many essential oils are processed in a manner that makes them not safe to use in lip balms because it wouldn't be something that you'd be able to eat. So for example, the peppermint essential oil that Brambleberry.com carries is actually sourced from a, a place that sells mints that are used in gums. So that is a lip safe product. But essential oils will vary in their lip safety from batch to batch based on how they're processed. Additionally, you never, ever, ever want to use a lip product that has any sort of irritation. So like, for example, cinnamon essential oil would be super not fun to put on your lips. So when you're thinking lip safety and you're thinking essential oils, just check with your essential oil vendor to see if it's lip safe. So right now at brambleberry.com, for example, Hungarian lavender, peppermint second distillation, rose Mary and spearmint are the four lip safe essential oils we have right now and again that's based on how they're processed not necessarily based on like the crop safety from year to year it's just a pure purely processing thing let's see any other questions oh my goodness Courtney can you switch the camera back to the top because yeah. I can see these ones are starting to harden can you see that on camera mm -hmm. it is yeah. so pretty I totally want to take a picture ah I love this project it is such a good value are there Oh, labels, yeah, thank you. Are there any other questions while I'm cutting out some labels that anybody has on Ustream or Periscope? I'm happy to answer them. How much colorant would you have to add if you wanted the tinted lips? <laughs> if you wanted the tinted lips, how much colorant would you have to add? So this particular recipe made around nine ounces of product, and I would say you'd probably need to add a good two to three teaspoons of color to get tinted lips, honestly. You you have to add a lot more color than you expect. And that varies based on the type of colorant you were adding. So in this case, for example, with the micas, you would probably need to add a good amount to get that tinted lip. Any other questions? Nope. Okie dokie. So one last thing that I just want to leave you with in case, you have, if in case you're like, well, how long is this going to last? This project will last at least, this product will last for you at least a year because all of these products have a really nice long shelf life. You don't need to use a preservative in this because there's no water in here. So. You can give these as gifts and your people that you give these as gifts to, little stocking stuffers, are going to have these for at least a year and they'll be awesome all year round. Again, if you want to buy a box that you have underneath the Christmas tree, you can buy a box today at handmadebeautybox.com. We have 30 more of these lip balm kits. And for subscribers on Ustream, guess what Courtney and I did this week? 
This is the limited edition box for next month. Well, December 23, so you'll get it like right after Christmas. We actually hand painted all of the boxes just for you. So these will be coming your way at the end of the month. And for those of you that aren't subscribers to handmadebeautybox.com, we would love to have you. I'll leave you with the reminder to just tag all of your products, HBB Show and Tell, so I'm sure to see them on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And until next time, guys, thanks for crafting, happy soaping, and thanks for watching.